one thing to point out as we begin this is just that when you're looking at somebody that you can trust with your capital, you're really just looking for someone who's doing a high quality, consistent, professional job. And so who would not want to invest with someone like that? And if you have two options, why would you not invest with a group that's more professional, more polished, more put together and more consistent, right? That's really the base of all of this. But how do investors judge institutional quality? And why would you want to be institutional quality when you say, well, I'm not raising money from institutions. I'm barely raising money from family offices. I've been doing private investor capital raising, right? But you always want to be a, a half notch above where you need to be appealing for capital because then the capital will come in faster. And then when a big whale investor meets with you, you're not caught flat footed and not ready for that moment when you could skip a couple levels and partner with a billion dollar family office you might meet at an event like this or an institutional investor of some type. All right, so what, what is institutional quality? What are, what are seven signs that somebody is institutional quality? The leaders are professional communicators, they're responsive, uh, they professionally represent themselves and they act well under pressure. There's a way to look professional and wear a three-piece suit and there's a way to look professional and wear a t-shirt and jeans, right? Um, so you see Silicon Valley people do that all the time. So it doesn't have to mean that you're overly formal. You can be the version of yourself that's authentic to who you are and be professional. Uh, the company's strategy is unique, clean, and concise, and it's easy to understand their materials. A lot of people have just 80 page pitch decks. Their teaser is just a Word document with a massive essay typed out that nobody wants to read. Um, that's not institutional quality. An institutional quality group aims to over deliver and they subtly show that their assumptions are conservative. If you're institutional quality and it's not your first rodeo, you're not running around the room saying, this is the best deal you've ever seen in your life. We're gonna 5X your capital in, in one or two years. Um, you know, It may be that there is a chance that you shoot the moon in 5X someone's capital, I understand that. But going around and promising that leaves no room to over deliver. You're promising such a huge thing, you're missing the point that Nobody wants to buy what you're selling unless they trust you and your team. And that matters more than the promised returns. Anyone can put 30% IRR on a piece of paper. It doesn't mean anything without context. If you leave today and go to the LAX airport, it doesn't matter if you are in the market for a Rolex. If somebody grabs your arm while walking through the airport and says, hey, do you want to buy this Rolex? You're going to tell them to go away because you don't know who they are, even though you're in the market for that thing. And the same thing when you invade in an email inbox of a quality investor. If they don't have context of trust around it or know who you are and you can't instantly create that with your communication, then they say, oh no, I'm good, I'm good, because they have no context of trust. And that matters more than the promised returns, because promised returns don't mean anything if you can't trust the person making the statement. Um, the group is more focused on the right fit and strategic alignment over signing a whole bunch of documents up front or having an NDA before they even tell you what you do, what they do. If they're so scared, they're gonna lose their whole business just by telling you what they do then it should just be a pass and move on to the next group. I know that for some things you need an NDA to see the fine print or a data room or something, but some people are so obsessed with trying to protect what they're doing that they kind of uh, slow down relationships at the beginning. Uh, the offering has a 12 to 19 page pitch deck, an executive summary, um, and the team has a depth of experience even though the materials are concise. That shows institutional quality. The brand is polished, institutional, and professional in the messaging and positioning of the company. It looks like something that could be a Silicon Valley brand or the consumer product company. It looks like something that could be on the shelf of a Whole Foods, et cetera. Um, and that the last point here, they're professional enough to be politely persistent, kind and pleasant to work with while also being direct and they don't lead with their emotions and get super upset and take it personally when someone does not reply to their email. And say, oh, why didn't you reply to my email? I shook your hand at the event and I sent you three emails, you didn't reply. They don't owe you a reply. They've got hundreds of emails coming in. They never signed up and you know, you don't have them on retainer to reply to your emails. They have hundreds of emails coming in. It's on you to write something interesting enough that they care to reply. We have some people who would buy one of our database of investors. They say, oh, I emailed like 42 investors, didn't even get one reply. It's like, well, these are just investors on planet Earth. You know, We don't own them. We can't require them to reply to your emails. So you have to compete against the world in the inbox. And that's what our workshops do is they help teach you strategies to get the attention, to add value first, to be unique compared to your competitors and unique in your investors' eyes. So you look like the Excedrin to a migraine they're having and they reach out and want to find you versus you looking like everyone else in the market. These are some important uh, points about being institutional quality. Uh, hopefully it's helpful to everyone here in the room. Here's an example of what's not institutional quality. I was like on a long Zoom call and someone texted me and basically um, 
and basically just was saying, hey, I need to talk to you about a deal. I need equity. And I was basically saying, okay, uh, what are you raising capital for? Yeah, I wanted to go to the next slide because I accidentally left the real phone number on there. So I switched it on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> just so you don't text him that I'm like saying how bad he is online on stage. But honestly, I don't care. Um, so <laughs> But thank you, Andres. Yeah, so, uh, but basically this, this guy in the middle of this long, like two hour board meeting I was in was basically saying, I need equity. Can you jump on the phone? I said, oh, what are you raising capital for? And he's like, no, I can only tell you over the phone. I said, okay, well, I'm on another call. So I literally can't right now, but send it over to you via email or tell me via text. And he said, if you can't, if you can't do a five minute phone call with me, then you don't deserve to see this deal. And I said, okay, like have a great day, you know? And like, and people get offended when I ask for an agenda to have a phone call. And they say, oh no, why don't you have 10 minutes? They're like, you have to hear it verbally. There's no way to say this over email. I say like, whatever you would say verbally, just type it into that keyboard, <laughs> send it on over. Uh, and people don't like that. But um, institutional quality means being a little bit agile and open and flexible and open-minded and um, politely persistent. Um, and not just going to a meeting and being like, hey, we've got this GPLP fund, this is the structure, take it or leave it. At the very least, you need to be able to do side letters. You need to be able to think about co-GP structures. You need to be able to do a one-off transaction or get them rights to do a one-off transaction if they put money in your fund first. Uh, that's institutional quality, not going around like a robot trying to sell one thing and then a lot of family offices might not find that appealing. Um, institutional, I've got a great spelling mistake on this slide, so this is, this is also fantastic. We're recording this. So institutional quality equals influential. Um, you are more influential the more institutional quality that you are. And it, it's instantly apparent if you are. In 0.3 seconds, you judge the opposite sex as being attractive or not automatically and subconsciously, and that's scientifically proven from 50 feet away. So when you open an email, what do you think happens when an investor looks at that email? They're gonna instantly try to put you in a category. Is this worth my time to even read this email or look at it or not? And so the more institutional quality you are, the more authority you have, you're showing commitment and consistency. We have a five and a half hour workshop that goes deep on investor influence. And we're just gonna talk about it for one minute here. But each one of these principles is shown through being institutional quality because if you are the number one in your niche, you are a scarce resource. They don't know anyone else who is scaling a medical practice as fast as you are or is as knowledgeable on global risk analysis for billion dollar plus family offices or whatever, whatever your niche may be. Use pictures and videos. This is uh, my email signature. I think it's the, the biggest, longest email signature on planet Earth probably, but shows our team. Uh, shows a picture of me in case you met me at an event. It'd be easy to keep me in mind um, of who I was. Um, our logo, um, the only thing that's missing from this is our, our one-liner, but you have to cut it off at some point. But every time I send an email to someone, um, they know where we're based out of our contact details and that we're not a two-person shop. Um, and that's important to us. So that's how we structured it. And I get a lot of emails from people that just have, you know, Richard at the bottom. And it's time for a phone call, something got left out of the Zoom line, and they can't even see what city they're in, what time zone they're in, in case that wasn't stated on an email, what the contact details are. And um, not everyone who has a horrible email signature is not institutional quality, but everyone has an email signature that looks this good or better. It's almost always institutional quality in other ways. And so subconsciously, it just helps business move faster. Um, pictures are more engaging, more professional. People look at faces first when they look at any graphic or um, advertisement. You're drawn to look at the face um, before anything else, and that's scientifically proven as well. And nobody's gonna take your business more seriously than you take yourself. If you're using a Yahoo email address um, and you don't have a professional email signature and you don't have even a simple three to five page website, no matter how secretive your venture is, and you didn't spend $8 at GoDaddy to get a professional email, why should someone even spend 0.8 seconds on replying to your email? You don't take yourself seriously, so why should they take what you're doing seriously? Because their time, 0.8 seconds, is worth more than $8 to a $50 million net worth family or $20 million net worth family. Um, don't be rigid. rigid. We talked about this earlier. Um, custom structure things as much as you can to appeal to how a family likes to do business. Here's an example of non-institutional institutional quality books we put together before. Uh, the first one was just a whole bunch of blog posts we put together, copy pasted it into a Word document, saved it as a PDF, and we called it Hedge Fund Blog Book. You know, it couldn't be much worse of a book um, in terms of formatting, my head's cut off, you know, it's not professionally designed, a whole bunch of the problems with it. We did a book with Wiley. Um, it's not that much better, honestly. It's a pretty bad cover, boring, etc. Uh, and then we learned how to make it more institutional quality and more dialed in. 
So this book appeals to somebody looking to start a family office. And we have family offices here that are in the room because they found this book, read the book, liked it, and then came here uh, and started being a member of our community. So it, this one has a subtitle, it's professionally designed, it has our URL on the front page. Um, it just smells like institutional quality material versus what you see on this page. So try to have your materials all look at this level or much, much better. It's not like we have the best materials of anyone on planet Earth, but everyone goes through an evolution and learning through business. And this is just what you don't want to do. And you want to do things that look more like this. So it looks more dialed in, more on brand, like someone actually cared about putting it together. Um, here's an example of a before and after one-liner. Uh, Targacell is one of our clients through pitchdex.com. Uh, Andres Espina helped me co-found that platform. We've had over 200 clients and produced over 1,000 marketing assets, websites, pitch decks, logos, one-liners, press releases, social media assets, etc. And Targacell was put on the spot at a big conference and they had their one-liner ready and they were able to say it, say it in the microphone and they attracted business at that event because they had a one-liner <laughs> that was dialed in and very specific to what they do. And we help them upgrade their branding as well. So it looks more quality and professional versus something that maybe somebody designed, you know, over a weekend in PowerPoint or something. Here's another couple examples. We had, um, what's his name? Uh, Andres at Waikiki? Is that, yeah, that's his first name from uh, Dynastic Development is when he came to us. I said, I have no idea what dynastic development does. I don't know if you're developing pharmaceuticals or ground up real estate. And he was doing um, commercial real estate construction management. And so we took the Lion logo that was gold and flat looking and created uh, CRE construction partners. Um, and he says his business has grown since and just looks much more professional. Um, I was the number two investor in, in Access Loans, a fintech company that got sold to a billionaire recently. And we took it from what it looks like there on the left and turned it into something there on the right. So again, you might not find it amazing, but you can see the improvement. You can see the institutional quality that it smells versus the original version, right? Here's another example, Iron Toro Capital. I know you have no idea what Iron Toro Capital does, but you probably have a decent guess at what motel to apartment conversions does, right? Super simple and easy. And sometimes people want to come up with these Greek God names and nobody knows what you do. Hardly anyone asks, you know, what that means, or you have Wilson Capital. The only person that cares about Wilson Capital is a person that already knows you and they'd probably invest no matter what name you put on your company. You want it to be attractive on the shelf when somebody walks through the Whole Foods of their email inbox and they say, oh, I've been looking for that, or that's refreshing. Or you follow up with them from the event and you don't have to remind them about what you do. Your one-liner doesn't have to carry the weight of saying everything you do, if your brand name says what you do, then your one-liner can drive home the benefits and make business come in faster. So I won't go over all the bullet points on this, but um, just notice how much more clean, professional, and most importantly, clear it is what this company does. And that just shows institutional quality and gives you an edge over other people. You can have your logo and your brand name and your materials sweat for you every single time you use them, or you can have them be an anchor and slow you down. Or like most people, they just kind of sit there and they're good enough. They're not driving business away, but you have no edge over your competitors and the brand tells people nothing about what you do. Um, and you can go to a billion dollars in AUM and not do anything I'm saying in these slides, but if you want to make more progress, these are things that help progress come faster. So we have a Scott here in the audience. Uh, yeah, great Scott. And uh, we helped him with some of his materials and we helped him rebrand to collateralized income investments. He takes equipment uh, leasing uh, agreements basically and has equipment as the collateral. It's a critical mission equipment. Um, and then gives investors, these percentages are outdated, so apologize for that, Scott. I probably should get updated percentages from you. But uh, when we designed the materials, we said, well, I think it's really important that people see the picture of the equipment. And you can look, there's an HD picture of the you know, million dollar piece of equipment here. And it just makes your strategy clear, visual, and makes it much easier to understand uh, what's going on. Um, I don't know if Abner's here in the room today. I don't think so. I'm sure he'll be at our New York event since that's where he's based. But here's a good professional institutional quality picture of a team member. Many times team members just have uh, every person on your team is a different background. One's black and white, one's color. One has like a wedding arm around their shoulder cut off. One's super fuzzy. It just shows you don't really care. You can get somebody for $50 or $100, $150 to redo the pictures for your team and all do a white background, even if you're in different cities, etc. So it needs to be professional quality. It needs to not look like you're gonna eat somebody's children for breakfast. He looks friendly, somewhat happy. 
Um, it seems like a very basic thing you shouldn't have to say, but a lot of this stuff um, drives away business and you're not institutional quality unless you're doing all these things. And it's the very basics of doing business in the investment space and a lot of people are not getting it right when they're communicating with investors. And it's a shame because you have 19 years experience in risk consulting or real estate development, but then you're not doing these things they are pretty easy and don't cost anything. First impression imputes value onto what you're offering to someone. Steve Jobs was big on this. The packaging around what you're selling makes it seem much more valuable or much less valuable. A lot of us know this intuitively, but it's just something to remember to make sure that your materials do you justice. <laughs>